Welcome to The Business Coach, a show in which you are to help entrepreneurs better their businesses. My name is Ian Dennis and today on the show we'll be exploring the fashion business. That's why I'm a bit extra today. I'll be meeting up with a lady named Chianze. I'm going to find out what exactly is her journey in the business and later on link her up to the owner of Kiko Rimeo. Welcome to the show. So Shienze, today we are at your shop. So many stocks I can see. <laughs> but the interesting thing is that you're an IBA graduate. How did an IBA graduate transition to be now becoming a fashion designer? So um, I was in theater at the moment. Like when you finish high school, there are many things you do. So for me, I ended up doing theater. You're an actor? Yeah, I'm an actress. <laughs> so like, yeah, I like, I like, and I enjoy. So at the moment I thought I would, because in high school I had done costumes for my drama club then and it was successful so i thought now it's a time to unleash all the creativity i had in high school so i tried it i didn't try it i happened to join a pageant and then during the pageant is when i i tried some modeling things here and there and i would wear some designers outfits and then i realized i like this thing and that's how it began and at what point now did you realize that this can actually has the potential to become a business um, I was doing, I was in school and doing this, but first I began as a jeweler because uh, starting a clothing line is quite expensive. Yes. So I began as a jeweler for a couple of years, like two people used to call me, I used to call it Shienze Jewelries. So people, I used to sell to people and then at the moment, the, at, at that time, the capacity grew. So now I started buying jewelries, I, I, become, I became a collector. Three years later after beginning, that's when I do I I I, I did the, the fashion. On the other side, I was doing jewelry and also selling groundnuts. Groundnuts. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird combination. I so, know. Yeah. Yeah. So at what point? I, why did you decide to name the business after your name, Shianze? Why did you think oh, your she, name is good enough? That it sounds. Shianze is my mom's. <laughs> Shianze is my mom's name actually. It's my son's name, and it means being loved and love affair uh, in Luya. Yeah. So oh, yeah, okay. so it's, it's called Huyanzo, like being loved. So I, um, and my mom has raised me as a single mother for a very long time since I knew it. So I was just like, I know she doesn't like the idea of me doing business, but let me just celebrate her in this. At what point now did the business start growing and take me to the stages of when the, it was an idea starting out small as a jewelry, at what point it blew up? Because I started seeing celebrities. I started. I first noticed you when I used to see Larry mentioning you on the show. So how, how exactly did you get there from just being a small jewelry collector now to being that this known designer? I know, like in fact when I was doing Larry's show, the first few faces, I used to do it in the house. And how did you get him? How did you how did you get all these celebrities? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, What's like, the story behind it? I I'll, I'll have to think about it. How, what happened? But I just remember there was there was a time I was called. Um, I was I was told I'm doing Larry's shirt on Friday. I was like I've never done someone's shirt on air. It was on Thursday, and I have to deliver on Friday. Oh. And before I had met I had met Larry at a Strathmore gig, but he looked very uninterested with what. I was telling you, I was telling you, no, I can dress you for your show. But I think it didn't. Celebrity yeah, scene. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like he didn't get it. So I think when this time I was called upon to do it, I made sure my shirt was nice. So I gave him what he had never worn, and he liked it. The fitting was nice. Fashion design business, it's quite competitive because you've seen a lot of guys importing goods into the country. You've seen a lot of fashion designers coming up. So how have you managed to market yourself and ensure that you have a consistent stream of clients coming into your business? One, you have to, uh, in all art industry, you have to be consistent and not give up because you can easily give up because sometimes the books never break even. And then um, also three, you have just to stay unique because you can't feel bad because someone has copied you. Because 
your idea will always be challenged by other people. Others will take your idea and refine it. And over the course of you being in business, you sort of like, how can I say it, disaster struck mm -hmm. the first time round when you told me that you got ovarian cancer. How exactly was that period for you, for you especially the first time round? And how did you manage juggling, fighting the disease, and now managing the business? How was it? And take me through this, through this story. How exactly was it? Okay, what I usually tell people, cancer is like pregnancy. You can hide it for just as long as you can. So at first, I knew it for myself. I'd never told my employees. At what point did you know now? Um, 2017, 2018, like I knew it. I went for, I was sick re, uh, frequent times and I went for tests and it was confirmed, but I didn't tell anyone. I just decided to fight it. Like I didn't want, I, I didn't want a lot of stigma. I also didn't want for people to feel like the company is about to close. But you see, as I told you, cancer is like pregnancy. You cannot just hide it as long as you can. So, um, after six months of doing that, I just decided to just share it out. They actually, I didn't tell my employees, they found it online, a poster. Wow. And they're like, hmm, this is you. And you mentioned to me about during the first period, your first set of employees, during that period of time when they came to visit you at the hospital, the story you're telling me about, mm -hmm. they came to visit you at the hospital, then they came back and sold everything. Take me through that period of time, and how exactly was it for you? Um, at first I was really disappointed, like um, I was in hospital for a while, they came and they now took advantage because they thought I will not survive my illness and I hadn't seen them for like two weeks. You see, in, in this kind of business, you pay people per week or per month or something. So they're like, uh, if she doesn't make it, we, we won't be paid. So they took advantage and they, they, they sold what was there. How did you recover from that phase? Because you're ailing, your employees have stolen everything from you. You're standing for, so how did now, did you recover? How did you get that strength now? To recover you know I haven't recovered <laughs> it looks like I haven't I have recovered but I haven't recovered um, there are things that are still work in progress um, a friend of mine I think you know him um, Phil may ensure we had the machines the two machines he's really been positive about the business picking up again and he's really like really kind of encouraged me to move on and so on and yeah, so it's it's been it's been a hard it's been a hard bittersweet moment. But sometimes I'm like, will I ever go back to the place? And then I remember um, God restores. Yeah. So it might be double fold, hundred fold, and stuff. So I just take a day at a time. I stopped following up on the police. I was like, this is wasting more of my time because I used to go to the police and then I go to hospital. Uh, so it's so much of your energy yeah, depleted. So yeah. If I use that time and sold to at least three people outfits, I'll have food to eat, I'll have money to buy my medication and things will be well. And right now you're in a feast now. The first, you did the first round season of treatment, one. season one, and then you told me again, ovarian cancer came again, yeah. season two. And I've been seeing online a lot whereby you're trying now to probably use your business to try also to raise funds, not only just for the business, but also for you. Take me through that. Yeah, you see, like season one was really challenging because I did a fundraise, I did a pay bill, and I ended up still finishing the, the treatment with debt. So I created a debt of about, <coughs> sorry, about 1.8. Oh. So um, now when I, I had just taken a break of about four to six weeks, then boom, I have, I have to I have to do the cancer treatment again. And also your train also still juggling that with yes. business. And and pay off my debts, you yeah. get. So um, I decided if I do if I use the same strategy I used last time, I may not get results. But being an artist, if I have an outfit and I say fifty percent of I I first I I reduce the cost of my outfits. But now there are people who know the value and they see and they're like, No, this you've charged us low, so low. We, we add something on top. So I reduced the cost of the outfits. I became, I also increased the number of ready to wear pieces I have just to be able to cater for the bill. So 50% goes to the business and 50% goes to the medical. How, 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 how is it, how is it coming along? Because you're taking me through this, I'm trying to struggle. So here's a business that's still trying to recover. Yes. Here's the entrepreneur who's ailing. Uh, it, it, how, how are you doing that? I don't know, I, yeah. I just can't tell. I, I, I can't just tell you, like, this is the path I'm using. I have some days that are really low, and I just don't want to do this thing again. And then there are days I'm like, yo, this is the day the Lord has made, yo. But 
as because I know this is going to be a continuous journey and there's still there's so much, despite what exactly you're going through at the moment, there's still so much ahead of you. Mm -hmm. But now as Shianze, what exactly are some of the hopes that you have in your business? How do you like to take Shianze fashion? I want to do retailing, I want to make ensure that clothes are accessible to people. We are about 47 million. Mm -hmm. Is it million or billion? Mm -hmm. Features for 10 million. Yeah. I can't feed everyone. Yeah. So there's a segment of people I'll be handling. And there's another person, so even. So Shianza is going to be a retail brand. Yes, yes. So after the break, I'll be linking up Shianza to one of the most established entrepreneurs in the fashion business, that is Anne Macrith of Kiko Romeo. So keep it right here on the Business Coach, where we help entrepreneurs better their business. <laughs>